Informatics is the art and science of processing information. So when we apply it to health or healthcare, that can be called health informatics. But then broadly, it is also interchanged with uh, e-health. So e-health, digital health, health informatics, they are related. Uh, it's really just starting in India. So it has not been very long and there are lots of efforts going on both at the central and state government level as well as the government and private sector level. So there are various health informatics initiatives taking place in India, but it's a very, very long way to go. That's a very excellent question. In fact, uh, capacity building should be of primary importance. We really need a systematic approach for training, education and training, the skills related to health informatics or e-health. So training should be also for IT professionals as well as the clinicians. So end users could be at all levels. So it's not a one size fits all training, but it has to be customized according to the needs of the And one of the ways I think training may also be reinforced once we have some regulatory authority like the National E-Health Authority in place. As of now, there is not many systematic courses going on. There are certain courses like I also used to offer some online certificate course, very short term. But I think there's a need for a systematic approach towards it. And both in the healthcare professional education as well as in the IT professional education, both of them need to learn the things from the other domain which they are not yet aware of but would be absolutely required when they go to apply or implement e-health schemes. And in this regard, as I said, the National E-Health Authority might be of some guidance. The National E-Health Authority is uh, in the process of being set up. So initially a concept note we had prepared and put it on the public domain and comments were invited on that through the MyGov platform as well as directly. And we have got almost 1,000 comments from various stakeholders. Now it's being analyzed. So once these comments are analyzed and the revised version is put up, so it may go through the cabinet. And ultimately, it will be established probably by the uh, yeah, an act of parliament. So it may take some two, three years time. I have been leading the National Health Portal. I mean, I joined as the project director on January 2013. Since then, we have uh, developed the basic modules and it was formally launched by the Honorable Minister Sri J.P. Nadda on 14th November 2014. After that also, we have made mobile applications based on the hospital and blood bank directory that was launched on the World Blood Donor Day, that was 14 June. And subsequently during the Digital India Week, we have also uh, launched the voice web because internet penetration is less than 30% all over India. So where there is no internet, people can call to this toll free number that is 1-800-180-1104. So once someone calls in this toll free number and it is available in five languages as of now. So other than English, we are also offering four regional languages, Tamil, Bangla, Gujarati and Punjabi. And they can get the information, health information that is available on the portal. So health and this national health portal essentially was meant to be the first point of access for any information related to health, whether it's disease or hospitals or healthcare in general, directory, laws, guidelines, anything related to health. Even if we don't have all the information, at least we can uh, refer you to wherever you'll get the authentic information. So the national health portal is meant for authentic or validated information related to health. And ultimately it will be in all the 22 scheduled languages of India. Right now, actually, it is in a pilot project mode, so in the National Institute of Health and Family Welfare, but it will soon become autonomous, so it will be registered as a society. So once the society is formed, the governing body will be deciding on the future aspects, and obviously it will progress as long as, as the technology progresses. But essentially, as I said, I mean, ultimately it will be available in all the 22 languages. We are highly interactive, so we have different discussion forums for general public as well as for professional discussions. Then we are also present on Facebook and Twitter. As I said, we are having mobile apps and then the voice web. So right now the voice web is interactive. I mean, it is based on the information that is available on the web. But later on, we may also have a call center based where actual we can go for medical consultation with doctors or specialists or get the information like related to grievance redressal but those would have to be manned by, I mean, people. So we have to have those contact centers. Those are all in the pipeline. But then right now, as we are planning, we have the information related to various aspects of health, disease, hospitals, including this blood banks and other things. And then we are also going to have 
interactive features. So, the most uh, unique point of this national health portal is that it is extremely dynamic and interactive. It is not that just there are some static pages which are not updated or if someone sends a query like we have the feedback form and whenever someone puts any comment there, any comment or query, usually within 24 hours we respond to it. So, sometimes uh, if we do not have the resources within our setup, we try to get uh, expert opinion from the people who are experts in that field and try to respond to the queries. So, that is how it is going and as I said, I mean with the technology, as technology increases, as the needs increase because in the mission mode project on health also citizens portal is one of the important areas for health related. So, that might well be built with this, then it will be integrated with all the state health portals. Ultimately, health is a state subject and different states are acting differently. So, this is as I said, it is the first point for information. So, anyone who comes here would get the information. So, even if it is not available within our portal, we can at least redirect to wherever the authentic information will be available.